good morning and a very warm welcome to all of you. On behalf of the Center for Brain Health Board, I extend thanks to each of you for your generous support in making the Brain Performance Institute a reality. Chancellor McRaven, we are so very honored to have you and Ms. McRaven join us today. I know everyone can see you, but George Ann, would you stand? They can't see you. <laughs> Thank you both very much for coming. Also, sincere thanks to UT Regent and friend Brenda Payovich for coming today. Brenda, would you please stand? And we received word they are tied up in traffic, but I hope you'll get a chance uh, later after the ceremony to speak to State Representative Morgan Meyer and his wife, Kena. Uh, he does an exceptional job of representing us in Austin. And also, Dan Branch is running late. He's a former state rep, and Dan was extremely instrumental in the growth and success of the Center for Brain Health. So I hope you'll thank them when they do come. Needless to say, a lot of time and effort went into today's planning. We actually have another event late this afternoon at which we're expecting 250 more people. So a very heartfelt thanks to Patty Huffines and Shelley Sills who chaired all of today's activities. Would y'all please stand? <laughs> Shelley, Patty. It is so uh, moving for me to look out and see faces who have been with us since the beginning and those of you who once you learned came on board. So I'd also like to express my sincerest thanks to the following who are here today. First of all, our donors. You are a true inspiration for us all. It is your continued and generous support that has made this day possible. We can never thank you enough, but I hope the scientific breakthroughs made here will serve as the best thank you possible to each of you. Secondly, our scientists, our clinicians, and our staff, your vision, your passion, and your professionalism are unparalleled, and they are key to our success. It is a joy to work with each of you. And lastly, let me thank the unsung heroes, or those who I call the unsung heroes. They are the people who have participated in research studies. Your willingness to give of your time and effort has enabled our scientists not only to gain knowledge, but to develop proven solutions. So to the thousands of students, teachers, athletes, and just regular folks who have been a trial participant, we say thank you. To formally get us underway now, it is my honor to introduce Dr. Hobson Wildenthal, President of the University of Texas at Dallas. Thank you, Debbie. What a wonderful day. Sandy Chapman and UT Dallas and I encountered each other in 1992. Uh, when I came to UT Dallas, it was repeated ad nauseum, we're the best kept secret in Dallas. I think we can say, most recently looking at this great crowd, we have blown our cover <laughs> in Dallas, in Texas, and in the world. Uh, but a university is a collection of human beings. And the university succeeds only as those human beings succeed. Uh, when I encountered Sandy, she was about as anonymous and alone as a non-regular staff member 
could be. She was supporting herself and her research with grants as she dealt with brain damaged adolescents, uh, buried away in the basement of the Callier Center. And um, look what we have now. Last week, which is also a great week at UT Dallas, a longtime friend met me on campus and he said, Hobson, could you have envisioned what UT Dallas has become 23 years after you arrived? And it kind of stunned me. And I said, you know, I, I couldn't. I knew the direction we wanted to go, but I could not have envisioned what our university has become. And I would like to ask Sandy the same question. Now, she is a true visionary. I know she knew where she wanted to go 23 years ago and even earlier, but is even she a visionary enough to have imagined what we already have next door and what we will have right here in the near future? Uh, Sandy's story is a key part of the UT Dallas story. As I say, she started really from the, a single apple seed, and over these 23 years, it's grown into a bountiful fruit-bearing tree. But how did she do it? Uh, of course, we know Sandy is an incredible leader, passionate, visionary, hardworking, indefatigable, never discouraged. But of course, she or anybody else can do it all alone. The leader's got to have a team and one of the dimensions of Sandy's genius is her ability to build teams, teams of scientists, teams of university colleagues and administrators, teams of philanthropists who give not only their financial resources, but sometimes even more important, their encouragement and their strength of spirit. Um, but what, what we've seen grow up, what I've been privileged to see really from the very beginning is uh, a paradigm of what any uh, great research and educational institution dreams of. Uh, someone who takes the lead, who has a vision, who knows how to build teams, how to garner support, how to use that support. Sandy's benefited from our university support, from philanthropic support, support from the state of Texas, uh, from, again, more philanthropic support, great scientific colleagues, great staff members. I, I will tell you what, uh, Sandy's team here at Brain Health and BPI is the envy of all of us on the main campus. Uh, we'd like to, but we don't dare steal some of our colleagues. <laughs> But uh, the concept of basic science, of education, of applied science, of translational science, of public service, of engagement with the community, educating the community, uh, what we have seen over Sandy's career has been easily the most successful element of UT Dallas's rise out of semi-obscurity into what is already broad daylight and, and a great future. And Brain Health and BPI, Sandy Chapman and her great, great team of colleagues and supporters is gonna lead the way into the future just as the way she has led the way from, let's say, that small basement room in Callier to where we are today. So it's now my privilege to introduce a great friend of higher education, of uh, University of Texas at Dallas and of Brain Health and BPI, uh, Regent James Huffines. Good morning. Thank you, Hobson. I had the great honor and distinct, distinct privilege to serve on the University of Texas Board of Regents for many years. In all that time, I only had one regret. Is that, and it was that my tenure did not overlap that of Bill McRaven as chancellor of the UT system. I would have thoroughly enjoyed working along his side 
with such a world-class leader and visionary. But I'm very happy that the institution that we all love is in such great hands. I doubt that there's much I could say about him that you don't already know, but in his 37-year service to our country, he earned the nation's respect and indeed the world's respect, gratitude, and admiration. And coming from Texas, all of our Texan hearts swelled with pride that he was one of us. He has advised and consulted with presidents and heads of state from around the world. But even as he ascended to four-star status and commanded special operations across the globe, he never lost sight of what he called the moral interpretude to care for the mental, spiritual, and physical well-being of all those who serve for the country and their families. As we look around, it's easy on a day like this to see why the study and research and care of brain health has now become part of our national conversation. And I think it's fair to say, given his responsibilities over the last few years, that Bill McRaven was ahead of the curve in realizing and appreciating the importance of crisp decision-making and clear thinking. As many of you know, he shared some of his wisdom in a commencement address for the ages last year. And this address, commencement address, has now been viewed over three million times on YouTube. If you have not seen it, I would encourage you to look at it. It is quite inspiring. But more importantly to me and to the state of Texas is that Bill McRaven is the right man at the right time in the long history of the UT system. And there's not a shred of doubt in my mind that he will leave an indelible mark on higher education and health care in the years to come, much like he did on the military. Our state and our world will continue to be beneficiaries of his guidance and bold vision. I am proud to call him a friend. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Bill McRaven, Chancellor of the UT System. Well, thank you very much, uh, James, for that uh, very, very kind introduction. And let me also thank you and Patty for all that you have done for the University of Texas system, the state of Texas, and frankly, for me personally. Uh, I've gotten to know James and Patty over the last uh, year, and I tell you, it is a great friendship. I genuinely appreciate it. I appreciate your advice and counsel. And again, knowing that you are in my court and at my side as I move forward as a chancellor uh, could not make me more comfortable. So thank you very much, James. As uh, many of you know, again, as a former chairman of the UT system, Board of Regents, and one of a very small handful of regents in our 130-year history to serve consecutive terms, you have made an incredible contribution to the state of Texas. And of course, your impact here is especially pronounced in North Texas. Many of the new, new facilities and the progress made at UT Southwestern, UT Arlington, and of course, UT Dallas have James Huffine's fingerprints all over them. That goes for the wonderful new facility we're celebrating today. So in addition to saying thanks, James, I want to congratulate you and Patty again for the great work. And this facility, again, will be part and parcel of your dream. I also want to recognize one of my favorite regents, Brenda Pavich. Brenda, great to see you here. Brenda has been kind of a constant in my life over the last year. She shows up at, uh, at my change of commands, at my retirements. Uh, Brenda, you've also been a great friend, and it's, uh, as always, a tremendous supporter of Dallas. Brenda, great to have you here. Well, again, good morning, everyone. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here today on what I consider a very momentous occasion for the University of Texas system, for UT Dallas, and for the ever more important field of brain health. Of course, none of us, none of us would be here were it not for the vision, the energy, and the hard work of Sandy Chapman and her team. So once again, Let's give them a round of applause, please. You know, the appeal of a facility where everyone, sick, injured, or completely healthy, can come to make their brains healthier is evident in the tremendous financial support that, that we have seen that's been able to be generated for this facility. And I want to take a moment to thank the individuals, the foundations, and the businesses 
who have given so generously. And it was mentioned earlier, but I will tell you, one of the things that has surprised me about coming to the UT system hasn't been the job. Uh, I tell folks, I said the transition from the military to higher education and clinical care, much to the surprise of a lot of people, was actually pretty easy. What has surprised me and what has inspired me is the great philanthropy, the great donors that I see every day, because they not only give of their money, and the money is important, but they give of their time, they give of their energy, and probably more importantly, they give of their dreams. I was telling James, I have folks around the system who have day jobs, who are very busy, and they fight, they compete to be on panels and task forces and part of the UT system. And nothing could be more inspiring or more exhilarating for me as the chancellor to see that kind of dedication and that kind of devotion to the system. As some of you know, I've been in my new role for about 10 months. And in thinking about my vision for the system, one of the things that I've emphasized is that I want the University of Texas system to be in the middle of every important conversation taking place in higher education and clinical care around the country and around the world, whether the topic is science, medicine, literature, engineering, law, national security, you name it. I want people to ask, where is Texas on this issue? Not where is the UC system, not where is SUNY, where is Texas? I want people to ask, what does Texas think about this issue? So as I've gone around and talked to folks, I said, I want to hear that. What does Texas think about this issue? And that's still the goal. But interestingly, as I traveled around the state, visiting the 14 institutions, seeing the terrific work being done in the neurosciences, I found myself increasingly focused on the question, how does Texas think? How does Texas think? How can we as individuals, as a state, as a society, learn to think better? And in thinking better, become happier, more productive, more competitive, and ultimately more successful. But we're here today to break new ground, literally, as we commence the building of what will become a phenomenal new facility. But more importantly, we are setting in motion something that is going to produce groundbreaking discoveries, treatments, and positive changes in the way we live. And what a better place to do it than here in Dallas. It was in Dallas more than 40 years ago that Dr. Kenneth Cooper set in motion the physical fitness revolution. In 1968, the year Dr. Cooper published his bestseller, Aerobics, only 100,000 people in America were jogging. Only 100,000. Now there are more than 30 million Americans who run for fitness and good health. The physical fitness revolution changed the way America thought about exercise. As a society, we now understand the link between cardiovascular fitness and health. Untold millions of lives have been saved or improved thanks to the physical fitness revolution that started right here in Dallas. And right here in Dallas, I believe we are on the cusp of the next great revolution, a revolution in brain health. My hope and my belief is that 40 years from now, we will have made improvements in brain health of the same order of magnitude that we made in physical fitness, although I think the brain health advances will come much faster. We're going to know a lot more about how to take care of our brains, and we're going to need, because thanks to, in part to the physical fitness revolution, we're going to need it because people are living longer. To make the most of the years we have, we need to make sure that brain fitness catches up with physical fitness. And I'm convinced it's going to happen. And I'm here to state in no uncertain terms that the University of Texas system intends to lead this new revolution to benefit our state, our country, and the world. <laughs> by breaking this new ground today, by breaking this ground today, we are moving Sandy Chapman's vision a big step closer to reality. To those whose generosity has helped make it possible, once again, I thank you. You are going to be proud of the work that is done here. Sandy and her team, I have made it clear that you can count on my support, but it should be just as clear that I expect big things from you. 
Mother, among other things, I expect you to be bold, to take risks, to challenge conventional wisdom, and to push through the boundaries. I want you to be not just experts or scientists, but leaders in the field of brain health. This challenge is so important and, frankly, so interesting, it deserves nothing less than everything you have and everything I have. So thank you all again for being here today and for your support for this incredibly worthwhile endeavor. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor. I think you can see why he's so motivational around the world and everyone wants to meet him. And thank you, President Wildenthal and James and Debbie Francis and Eric. This is a huge day for us, you know for me. I envision a day soon when all of us will check our brain health, just like we do our cholesterol, or maybe even better, that we think about it as often as we brush our teeth. Just imagine, and Lida saw this recently, watching and measuring the complex inner workings of your own brain changing in real time as you learn something new, as you tackle innovative thinking, or if you suffer from an injury, you overcome brain and cognitive deficits or to enhance latent capacities if you have a progressive brain disease, but ultimately improve your brain's performance every stage of your life. We are making this futuristic vision a reality at the Center for Brain Health's Brain Performance Institute, making what used to be science fiction, science reality. Our brain this is exciting to be a brain scientist. When I chose the field 30 years ago, we had no idea about the brain. We now know it is the most complex engineered system ever created. We constantly update our brain's design by how we use it. Well, that's compelling, but it's also a little concerning because you need to ask yourself, how are you using your brain. With its 100 billion neurons and more than 100 trillion connections, our brain is the power source for everything we dream, we achieve, we lead, we learn, we dream, we plan, and we believe. Our team of over 140 plus scientists at the Center for Brain Health are transforming the way we think as a public and act about our brain. Just think about this. We have learned more in the last decade than all the years cumulative. Our brain health team is surging forward on all cylinders. So you ask, well, what does Brain Performance Institute mean to me? The Brain Performance Institute is the headquarters where proven protocols, new brain health discoveries will be widely available to you to your family, to our communities, to our corporations, to our colleagues, to our educators, to our sports teams, where we will learn specific ways to improve mental productivity, efficiency, fast thinking, and to you personally and professionally. Because the science was not available, we have been neglecting and abusing our brain's health with toxic habits. In general, most of us only think about our brain when something goes wrong. And I like to say people, when I say I do brain health, they say, well, I don't need that yet. And I say, oh, really? Because our brain is the most important thing that we have. Think about this, the number one cause of cognitive decline is healthy people letting their brain go backwards. Many of us would assume Alzheimer's is the culprit, but in fact, 87% of us will not develop Alzheimer's disease. We have learned a great deal about what can be done to eliminate toxic habits and how to build functionality and to strengthen system. In randomized trials, we have shown 
healthy people increased the speed of their neural connectivity by 30% in the last quarter of their life by challenging their mind properly. Think about this. We have to close the gap for our education. Brain health has solutions. We are now installing critical reasoning and innovation in classrooms to reverse the following awful trend. We want to reach every single student. Right now, U.S. graduation rate is at, is at a dismal 23 out of 30 compared to other developed countries. That's not acceptable. This is especially true in low-income areas. We have been transforming the way classrooms, whether they're kids in poverty or gifted kids, just imagine a classroom of kids learning to create new knowledge and going from being very bored with stuffing facts to raising their hands and turning on the brain for what it was wired to do. The number one cause of disability is brain injury. One in three people will develop a concussion or a brain injury in our lifetime. Veterans, athletes, children, and actually the number one cause is seniors, falls in seniors. Medically, present day, we treat brain injury as an acute disease and then say that's as good as you'll be. Our science here at the Center for Brain Health has shown that indeed brain injury is a chronic problem. Later emerging deficits may appear and we can be monitoring just like we do cancer to make sure that the brain continues on the track of recovery. We have solutions. We've increased complex reasoning by 25% in people 10, 20 years after a brain injury and significantly reduced depression by 60%, which is one of the most common problems that emerges later. Celebrate that people that were told you will never be able to go to college now graduating magna cum laude that had an earlier brain injury. So what does the Center for Brain Health and the Brain Performance Institute mean to Dallas? We are honored to celebrate today this momentous day with UT Dallas, UT system, this city, throughout Texas, and really across the nation and the globe. Dallas has thrived because of visionary leadership. I like to say we create a nexus of excellence. Tex Dallas is here because of the train station that started years ago. So I say trains, planes because of DFW, and now brains. <laughs> brain health is leading this global effort to shift the focus from brain deficits to brain potential. And this is really important because no wonder we all have a stigma about the neck up. Because if I'm get, everyone say, I'm afraid of what you're gonna tell me, but what if I say, we can help you build your potential? That is what is unique about our approach here at the Brain Performance Institute. We are unlocking human brain potential by understanding, protecting, healing, and enhancing, and in bettering brains now. So one of the most common questions we get asked is, well, how is what you do, how is your institute different from other places? The Brain Performance Institute will be the first facility of its kind, not an acute treatment center, but it's where we will reduce stigma of taking care of your brain to stay fit. You will want to come, right? To see, can I make my brain work better, think better, last longer, just like we do everything else for health. Imagine that we have a metric that you will be able to say, hey brain, how are you doing this year? And we can say, I can make it stronger, I can make it better, and we will incentivize, incentivize brain fitness. The Brain Performance Institute is a place where individuals of all ages will either come in person or take advantage of telesystems across the globe for their quest for better brain health. You know what? People are really hungry to know. When I say I do brain health, people want to ask questions. So we're very curious. People want to know, but we didn't have a place to go before now. 
At Brain Health, you will know this about me, we are impatient explorers, determined to close the gap from scientific discovery to improving human lives. Construction's just beginning, but we are not waiting. The Brain Performance Institute has already delivered evidence-based systems to 50,000 individuals in the last few years. UT Dallas Brain Performance Institute will be a force multiplier to our nation's greatest economic driver, human cognitive capital, our most valued asset. Now join me, a video to stir up your endorphins as you embrace the possibilities becoming reality right here in Texas. Thank you. Good to see a lot of friendly faces. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Eric Bennett, and I am the grateful and inspired executive director of the Brain Performance Institute. I'm gonna spend the next four or five minutes talking to you about some more specifics on what we're gonna do in the building and how you can help us. And yes, I'm the last thing between you guys, food, and stronger air conditioning, so I'll be as quick as possible. First, I need to thank some people. First, Paige and their team for the amazing design work. Um, Uh, Larry Speck, Robert Doan, Hillary, and Claire, thank you very much. It was great to work with you. I told them, Sandy and I told them we wanted iconic, but on a budget. And you can see from the video, they, they delivered. So we're super excited about that. Also, thank you to the UTD leadership team, Hobson Wildenthal, uh, Calvin Jameson, Rick Dempsey, Doug Tomlinson, uh, UT System, David Daniel, formerly UT Dallas, now UT System, uh, Brenda Smith, Tom Lund, Dale and David. And uh, Ron, this happy day, I have to shout out the thanks to you because our meeting with you last December was an inflection point in us being ready for today. And so thank you uh, for, for getting that, Patty setting that up and you doing that. So thank you very much. Um, and we're also looking forward to working with Turner Constructions the next 16 months and getting the building open. So they've been hired to do that. Uh, my little niece can tell me with great confidence where her head, shoulders, knees, and toes are. Remember that song? If all you have uh, kids and grandkids and how proud she is to brush her teeth, like Sandy mentioned. But she cannot tell me where her brain is. She looked stumped, and my sister was embarrassed she didn't know, because I work for her brain place. But I think most two-year-olds are like her, and it's symbolic on where we are as a world in dealing with our brain. It's just not a conversation, as Sandy mentioned, until there's a problem. One of our missions at the Brain Performance Institute is adding brain health to the equation of health. We are calling it the brain health movement. When people think about brain health globally, we want them to think about Texas. We want them to think about the Center for Brain Health and the University of Texas at Dallas as a pioneer and collaborator in leading this movement. At the building, you'll see us very active in holding events with leading expert and thought leaders in brain research. We're already doing that next door, but it's gonna grow substantially. In addition, we're gonna make a huge effort locally, nationally, and globally to be a strong and credible voice for advancing brain science to reaching the public. Too much research stays at research. Scientists, doctors, policymakers, politicians, military leaders, and other influencers will hear from us and collaborate with us to help reach this vision. That's great. We need to put brain health on the map, but we need to help people today. That's the other part of our mission. Think about one of these situations and pick one that resonates with you. You care deeply about educating children and are worried about our education system. Or maybe you have a child or a grandchild struggling in school or had a concussion and is just not back to where they used to be. Or you care deeply about those who serve in our military and want them to survive as civilians. Or maybe it's you. Maybe it's your parents and you're concerned about Alzheimer's or just want to know what you can do to improve the health of your brain or improve stress and productive, improve levels of stress and productivity in your company. Well, I'm excited to say we can help all of those people today. We are not the solution for all the problems, but we have incredible resources that can help tens of thousands of people per year. Today, we are a post-acute care and focus on enhancing cognitive function that translates to real life benefits, and I can't wait to see what we're gonna have coming down the pipelines. Um, 
So the facility you saw a little bit, but you can see you saw the lobby, but we designed it to be iconic and warm and welcoming. And sort of the facility and team will make you feel empowered and inspired from the moment you walk in. The stigma of the brain is just too much to feel like a clinic or a hospital for treatment. The building was designed to be a learning environment, not a treatment facility, using the latest and greatest in technology, all consistent with strong brain performance. There's gonna be a lot of hidden themes about brain performance in, in, in the building, we're excited about that. You or your friends or family members or people you give for us to help can participate in groups of five to 25 people or one-on-one -on -one assessments and counseling. You might be coming for the first time or you might be coming back every year for a booster or an annual checkup from the neck up. I like that. I didn't come up with it, but I think it's, I like it. If you ask your doctor about your checkup for the neck up, they kind of give you a stump look most of the time. Uh, other things, you want to see your, brain, see your brain in real time using the most cutting edge brain imaging? Yes, we'll have that. Can't come here too far away or just don't want to come? Mockingbird's too much of a mess for you? We have programs through our mobile teams that will come to you virtually through apps, online tools, and e-learning. So we're going to serve more people outside of the building than in the building. If you don't like talking to people, say you're an introvert or you have a child with autism. We can do it with avatars in a virtual game-like environment, and I'm not kidding about that. We can do that today. The team's gonna include cognitive neuroscientists, neuroengineers, brain imaging experts, brain science clinicians, big data mathematicians. I love big data. Everyone has to use that word to be cool these days. Medical doctors, psychologists, and other healthcare professionals. We're gonna have the best of the best in this new building. Now, what can you do to help? If you got invited to this, you've already done something to help, so thank you. So I'm just gonna ask you to do more if you can. And our brains like options, don't they, Sandy? Don't they work better if they like options? So I'm gonna give you some options. Uh, we need money and awareness to make this happen. It's pretty simple, along with, with our hard work. So I got three Ds, donate, do, and discuss. Donate, we have a special club called our 100 by 100 club of people that have committed $100,000 or more, and we're halfway to our 100. That's huge for us. Of course, there are other giving levels if that's too rich for you, but every dollar counts and we're grateful for it. Do, participate in our programs and assessments. Come check out our programs. We're, we have offer them on a limited basis now. Attend our events going on this year and next year. Check out our website. It's truly a remarkable website. It has everything you want to know about what we do here and all the great research. Uh, read all you can about the brain. It's a hot topic. So for, to help be an advocate for just the brain as a subject. And secondly, or thirdly, discuss. Tell people about us. Talk about us. Hype us up a little bit. Um, bring them with you. Bring them to an event, one-on-one. -on -one. We have host all kinds of events of groups of five to 20 people. Bring your investment club. Bring your uh, YPO group. Bring your any group you can to. We're happy to set up a special event for you and uh, uh, for anyone you think that needs to know about us. We do that all the time. So the more awareness we have, the more it helps with everything. So to conclude, thank you for all you've done to support us. And please stay with us for the ceremonial groundbreaking, uh, turning of the dirt, and celebrate the groundbreaking of the future of brain health. And we will be open in 16 months, but we're gonna do our, start our work now. Thank you very much. <laughs>